$53 less. ABC Sports presents... Live in its 26th season, the Professional Bowlers Tour. Today, from the magic city of Miami, we bring you the $150,000 Miller Lite Classic. Let's meet today's outstanding field of finalists. In fifth place, winner of the biggest purse in PBA history, Dell Ballard Jr. Last year's leading money winner, and recently named 1986 Player of the Year, Walter Ray Williams. Making his second television appearance this year, the 1985 Player of the Year, Mike Albee. In second place, last year's tournament winner from Vider, Texas, David Ozio. Our tournament leader with 85 career television appearances and the winner of last year's Firestone Tournament of Champions, Marshall Holman. That's our championship field today on the Professional Bowlers Tour. There it is, ladies and gentlemen, a beautiful bowling establishment here in South Florida with a very famous name on top, Don Carter. And we're here for the finals of the $150,000 Miller Lite Classic. And what a delight to come to this establishment for the 11th consecutive year. Good afternoon, I'm Chris Schenkel. Happy Valentine's Day to all of you, men and women. You know, the Miller Brewing Company has been with us uh, since the early 60s. A uh, very innovative approach to bowling. The most recent one is a million dollar grand slam. One of our field of five, they start here today winning and then win in Milwaukee and Cleveland will get one million dollar bonus. So it's a big event for the five and what a field. 40 total titles, seven major titles in the field of five. Our tournament leader averaged only 234. It's gonna be a great afternoon. Immediately following us is ABC's Wide World of Sports. Olympic uh, teammates and roommates at one time We'll meet in the ring today on Wide World of Sports. The champion of Andrew Holyfield, who is undefeated, and what a puncher, will go against Henry Tillman. So it'll be Holyfield trying to defend his title against the challenger, Tillman. That's later. Right now, here's our colleague who knows about titles with a total of 17 himself, Bo Burton. Thank you, Chris. Very good. What a field. You're right, Chris. Absolutely the best field of the 1987 season. We have a player who's just been named the Bowler of the Year, Walter Ray Williams. The 1986 Player of the Year, Mike Albee's in the field. David Ozio, the defending champion, who had a dream that he's going to win this tournament. Del Ballard, you saw him win 100,000 the first week in the U.S. Open. And then our tournament leader, Marshall Holman. Everybody knows him. Probably the greatest talent in the game today. What a field. Now, to go along with that field, we have tremendous scoring conditions. Chris alluded to 234 average by Holman. The players average better than 240 in this championship pair during the week. And to top it all off, a $1 million bonus if somebody can win this tournament, the Milwaukee Championship, and the Miller Open Championship in Cleveland. So, Chris, they're ready to go. A $1 million in stake, $27,000 first place, but they're shooting for those big bucks. Let's let them roll. All right. Thank you, Bo, and we let him roll. The Earl Flynn of bowling on the left, I call him, Walter Ray Williams, last year's bowler of the year. And here's the man that started our series this year in the 26th year, winning the United States Open in Tacoma. As a result, $100,000. First shot of this event. Beautiful. Dell Ballard, Jr. of Richardson, Texas from Stockton, California, a college graduate in physics, the man who won 145,000 last year, looking for his fourth title. Chris, the championship here, ideally scoring 72 lane bowling center here at Don Carter's. We're using lanes 13 and 14, and we'll tell you why they score so well right after the shot. There you go, one of the reasons, Bo, and he averaged 255 in two games on this pair. The championship pair, wood lanes that are just in top, top shape. There's urethane finish, a very smooth outside line the players can use to the pocket around the first arrow, which accelerates the carry of the pins and naturally very smooth conditions. They play, say that both lanes play about the same, and that helps a lot. So we can look for tremendous scores, tremendous carry, and who knows what can happen. All but the seven pin on a high hit for the six foot two inch Walter Ray Williams. He's a 172 pounder that 
is a world horseshoe pitching champion. Not once, but four times. And Bowie finished third last year to someone I know back home in Indiana. Mark Seabold took the world title away from him. But he'll be back next year, Walter Ray. Walter for the spare, second frame. You just joined us, this field of five, Del Ballard Jr., Walter Ray Williams, Mike Albee, David Ozio, and the flamboyant Marshall Holman, battling for the $27,000 first prize and the first step toward a million bucks. Looking for that double, but he's left the 10 pin on the right lane. Something we haven't seen very much of as we watch the profile of Dell Ballard. Very similar to Marshall Holman. Check that cuffed wrist that gets in position a bit. The big turn on the ball, the long slide, lofts the ball about 24 inches over the foul line. The good extension and uplift. Cross lane for the spare. Dell Ballard, when he received that $100,000 check from Mike Harbison, the executive vice president of Seagram's, in our first telecast of the year, he asked Mike to hold him up. Well, he's regained all his strength. He's had uh, a tough week, as all five have had, because they've had to battle other bowlers with big scores. The low profile of Ballard. And that's the kind of pin action we've been used to seeing. The ball comes in light and just slices out the heart of the rack. Three pound, eight ounce pins this week. Ideal for the pros to just keep hitting the pocket and carrying all the pins. As you see Ballard, that wrist action at the bottom of the swing, good extension, shot around the first arrow, and here it comes. Watch the action of the five pin as it zips over towards the seven. Excellent shot. Balder Ray needs a strike to stay even. Coming up very high on that head pin, but he gets that strike nonetheless. Here's what the bowlers like as he trips the four pin. Walter Ray hits slightly high. When that two pin goes to the sideboard, trips out to four seven. The pros always have enough power to carry the light hit. Give, give him the high hit. Now watch the action of the two pins. See it goes to the sideboard, the left sideboard takes out the four and seven spare uh, pins avoiding the four nine split. When the players can carry that crisp, then that's when you look for big scores. Last year with his total of 145,000 was more than he earned for the five years previous. Well, now you'll see how Walter Ray Williams covers the eight pin. The players call this a DOA, dead on arrival. No lift, the ball deflects as it hits the one three, almost leaves the eight ten split. Gets a good break, the six knocks out the 10, an easy spare. The match will be even through four frames. Walter Ray Williams, who finished fifth here last year in the Miller Lite Classic. More action coming up from the Kendall Lanes, Kendall, Florida, outside of Miami, after this. My funny. Man, skiing sure is fun. You run into lots of nice people out there. Yeah, we ran into Corky yesterday. That's for sure. And afterwards, there's nothing like a warm fire. Oh, I'll see. And a cold door light. Light really tastes great. And it's less filling. And us hot doggers don't like to get filled up. Speaking of hot dogs, where's you girl? You. Great seats, hey, buddy? Ah, ah, hey, where are all the guys? They're missing all the fun. For great taste, there's only one light beer. Miller Lite. Why do 32 million Americans protect their engines with Quaker State motor oil? Because they're car-caring people who want only the best for their engines. Here, Quaker State quality stands up to the constant pounding heat and friction that breaks down motor oil. You can see Quaker State quality, the pure protection that comes from our state-of-the-art formula that can't be beat. Pure Quaker State people, reaching for the reaching for the The 87 Yugos are here, and people love them. I think it's fun to drive. I like the rack and pinion steering. We want an dependable second car. It's easy to love America's most affordable new car, the 3990 Yugo GV. And now there's even more value during Yugo's Pack for Action sale. You can get sport wheel covers, a right side mirror, roof rack. Great. And a three-year, 50,000-mile extended service plan. Wow. 
all at terrific savings. I'll take it. Hurry, this offer won't last long. See your participating Hugo dealer today. Happy Valentine's Day, Granny. And these two exchanged Valentines, to be sure. Mr. and Mrs. Don Carter, Paula and Don. Don, four-time winner of the U.S. Open. Paula has women, won the women's U.S. Open before. Great couple. Still looking for that elusive double here in our very first match. Del Ballard leaves the, what we call the soft 10. The six pin lies down in the channel. Doesn't quite get out the 10. In the second frame, he left the solid 10. So Dell's been around the pocket every shot. Nobody has gotten a double so far. It's all even after four frames. Okay, Del Ballard, Richardson, Texas. We asked him uh, what winning the $100,000 in the U.S. Open has done for Well, him. winning the $100,000 in the US Seagram's U.S. Open really gave me the confidence and the, the confidence that I can bowl real well out here. Uh, now, whenever I made the finals this week, I was real loose. I didn't press. You know, I didn't think I had to bowl real well for the money. Uh, I just went out and had fun, and, and, and it really helped me out this week. Stuck at the line, leaves only the four pin. Checking his slide and the approach. Del Ballard pulls up at the foul line. The ball goes high, and he avoids the 4-9 split. But once again, remember, he tripped the 4-7, the, uh, Walter Ray did. And watch the action there as the 2-pin lays in the channel, doesn't take out the 4, the 9 falls down. Ballard trails by 1. Well, we're getting an exercise in the shooting of spares, which, of course, are important in this wonderful game of bowling. And a close match between Walter Ray Williams, who's up and getting ready, shooting in the fifth frame with a spare working. Right lane. That smooth shot left the 10 pin. Mm. Obviously, a little extra pressure has affected the player's shots. Nobody has had a double so far. Walter Ray with a spare. The match will be all even. And here's the purse breakdown. $1,000 at stake in this match to the winner. Then he has a chance to win $8,500. Second place, $14,000. Obviously, $27,000 at top. But more importantly, a chance to win a million bucks. Earlier, we checked with Walter what being named Bowler of the Year meant to his career. Being named Bowler, being named bowler of the Year has uh, really helped my life, I think, because uh, it's given me a better confidence on my uh, game out here, and it's also helped me uh, pick up an agent, uh, which has helped managing things outside of bowling and picking up endorsements and stuff. All right. For Walter Ray, his third strike here in this first match, that one coming in the sixth frame. Walter Ray's best shot. He throws this with some self-confidence. It snaps all ten pins right back into the pit. What he has done is allowed Del Ballard to get up and throw a strike and let the match be even. I think the scoring's going to pick up right now. Oh! The nine. This is a hit we don't see very often. Del Ballard kind of smiling as the ball cuts right through the heart of the pins. The ball hits the one, three. Normally a ball will deflect from the five pin into the nine pin. Not so. Ballard had so much power on the ball, he actually got robbed on that hit. Solid nine. Not a lot of speed. Dal Ballard, who won the United States Open with a 247 to Pete Weber's 209, and then the 100,000. Incidentally, Pete Weber finished 76. His dad, Dick Weber, 84th in the Miller Lite Classic. Quite a bit difference in style between what Don Carter used to dominate the bowling game with that down and in slow speed and the big, powerful, hard-throwing hooks of these players today. And then we have the 2-8-10 coming up. Trouble for Del Ballard. He comes up. Remember, he's stuck at the foul line here in the fifth frame and left the four pin. And this time he stays down and he extends way out over the line. The ball looks like it's going to break. It needs to break right here. It goes a little farther down the lane. He leaves the 2-8-10. The best he can do is throw very hard at the 2-8 combination and hopefully bounce one pin out and carry the 10. All right. 
Interesting first match. We'll have more of it, but first we're going to take this break for this message. I'm 80 years old, and I love Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Brave adults are coming forward to challenge the notion that Frosted Flakes is just a kid's cereal. I eat them, I love them, and I don't care who knows. With that extra crunch in milk, that frosting just right, they have a taste adults can love every bit as much as kids. Go ahead, Shirley. You can do it. I love them. Thank you. <laughs> what more can you say? Frosted Flakes have the taste adults have grown to love. They're great. True value hardware it's more than a name. Get accurate results with the Master Mechanic Super Seed Level for just $3.99. Features a magnetic V groove plus plumb and level vial. In February, the Master Mechanic Super Seed level is just $3.99. Look for the True Value of the Month banner at most True Value hardware stores and home centers. Two Olympic medalists square off. Undefeated Evander Holyfield defends his junior heavyweight crown against the last man to beat Mike Tyson, Henry Tillman, on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Next. I'd like to wish a happy Valentine's Day to all my moms out there. All right, Walter Ray Williams, Bo, is the heavyweight in this first match, big and tall. And what a world junior heavyweight bout coming up later on Wide World. Two roommates, first time the Olympic roommates have squared off in a championship bout. Should be great. Oh, Walter Ray now tightening a screw for the first time, getting his double and taking a 25-pin lead. What has made Walter Ray Williams such a great bowler on the professional bowlers tour is his versatility with his, the type of ball he can throw and his ability to take advantage of his opponent's mistakes. Walter Ray floundered through five frames through a strike in the sixth. When Ballard gave him that opening in the seventh, as you see on the scoreboard, Walter Ray jumped right on it. Watch this shot. He knows this could be the winning shot right here in this eighth frame. That's the way he performed last year in becoming bowler of the year. Just extremely competitive, the ability to concentrate and deliver. Meanwhile, warming up to meet the winner of this first game is left-hander Mike Albee. Ballard uh, makes his presence known again with only his third strike of the match, this one in the eighth frame. Del Ballard, the U.S. Open champion, must put it together right here. Ninth frame, he trails by 35 pins. He has a potential 214 game if he can throw four more strikes. Walter Ray Williams Jr. going at a 219 pace, but the pressure is on Ballard. The shot. And an awesome 4-10 left. Big trouble for Del Ballard. He has to take a shot at this. He has to get this ball. He has to get the ball over in the four-pin zone as you see the ball cut through and leave the 4-10. Try to slide the four over and into the 10. Here he goes. Not to be. So for Del Ballard, the United States Open winner here in 1987, two open frames, 152 through the ninth, trailing by 47 and now he can add to it Walter Ray Williams. Three in a row up, ninth frame. Oh, yes. Very predictable bowler, Nelson. Well, he's such a great match game player, and he never loses his cool. He's had a potential 249 game. He leads by 57 pins. And in our field, two 300 bowlers during the week, Albie and Walter Ray Williams. They'll meet next. The Professional Bowlers Tour is brought to you by Miller Lite. For great taste, there's only one light beer. By Yugo. Everybody needs a Yugo sometime. And by Firestone. America's home for car service with over 1,700 locations coast to coast. The Professional Bowlers Tour will continue after this message and a word from our local stations. 
Enter the $50,000 Firestone Tournament of Champions sweepstakes, and you could win a trip to the Tournament of Champions, where you'll be paired with one of the five finalists. And if he wins, you win up to $25,000. Come to Firestone for your sweepstakes entry form, which is also an instant winner card, and everybody's a winner. You could win a free Mastercare tune-up, alignment, shocks, brakes, discount coupons, and more. Enter the Tournament of Champions sweepstakes at Firestone today. You could win a trip to the tournament and up to $25,000 cash. Fancy restaurant, candlelight, is this business or pleasure? Which do you prefer? Stick to business, people are watching. Of course they are. This is a commercial to prove this is the perfect time for Seagram's Golden Wine Cooler. It's wet, and it's dry. And it's Seagram's, I heard. What happens after the commercial? Pleasure. What do you have in mind? You get to drink it. New Seagram's Golden Wine Cooler. It's wet and it's dry. On the Disney Sunday movie, discover the secrets of Captain Nemo's underwater world. Secrets that are mine alone. 20,000 leagues under the sea. Sunday. Mazda's got your number. 626. The front-wheel drive family sedan that does a number on Honda Accord DX sedan. 626 has more passenger room, plus electronic fuel injection and rear stabilizer bars. Features not even available on Accord, yet 626 is stickered $700 less. And that just may be the best number of all. Get a great Mazda deal today in Mechanicsburg, Harrisburg, York, and Lancaster. This is a land where foreign policy has no rules. We'll do this one by the book, Sergeant. And warfare has no limits. But now Marine Sergeant Jack Burns will teach the enemy the proper use of diplomacy, the importance of restraint, and the power of negotiation. Fred Dreyer. Death Before Dishonor. Rated R. Coming soon, consult your local newspaper for showtimes. Watch John Reffitt with sports on 27 News at 6. Let's go back to 1971. Another great moment in the history of the professional bowlers tour. The voices of Bud Palmer and Billy Whalo. It's all even. He really wanted that one, Bud, because that forces Larry Lexi to strike. If Larry doesn't strike, he loses. Man, you couldn't get a more exciting finish here. Typical of the kind of action you see on the professional bowlers tour. But here it goes. Larry Lickstein needs a strike and they won't even watch. He's the winner! Beautiful pressure of our young 21-year-old Larry Lickstein. And currently, the first game has ended. Walter A. Williams, 228, with seven strikes over Ballard's 161. And in the 10th frame, uh, Williams left a 10, covered it, whereas Ballard left the 2-4-8-10, chopped the 2 4 8 off the 10. So, here we have the money winners, McCordick, that 300 perfect game bowler, still leads, and uh, Ballard uh, edging a little closer, but he needed to finish either first or second to pass the leader, Weber, Wagner, and so on down the line. Now, the past two years, bowlers of the year, Mike Albee in 85, Williams in 86. A classic match, a right-hander against this left-hander. Very methodical left-hander, Mike Albee of Indianapolis. Mike Albee has bowled so well in the championship rounds for the last couple years. As you said, Chris, won over $200,000 two years ago. Gave up his bowler of the year crown to this man, Walter Ray Williams. First shot. So, uh, Williams welcoming Albee to the second game, uh, matching that opening frame strike. Six feet, two inches tall, Walter Ray Williams, kind of like a wild stallion. Lets everything stretch out, and he has that scarecrow finish. Look at him just extend through, just lets it all hang out. I think uh, one reason he is so good is his versatility, and he's used to being a champion. Was the world's horseshoe champion, now the world's bowling champion. 
high hit leaves the 6-10. The first shot so far today that Walter Ray Williams did not get online. Every ball in the first match, he hit around the pocket. Here coming up in the second frame, he pulls the ball left of his target, avoids the split across lane for the 6-10 spare. All right. Strike and a spare for Williams in our second match. The winner to meet David Ozio, the talented Texan, and then the tournament leader, Marshall Holman. Albie now hoping to double shooting in the second frame. Albie a camera buff. He, uh, even when he isn't in the championship round, often comes down here on Saturday morning, takes pictures of the set, the ABC crew warming up, and even the players warming up. He says he really enjoys it. His wife, Tammy, looks on. She's studying where he's standing on the lane. Mike looking at his target out there at the arrows, 17 feet past the foul line. And a nine, second of the afternoon. A disappointed Albie hits apparently perfect in the pocket. The ball drives through the one, two, five, and there it does. Chops the five straight off the nine. An unusual hit that's almost the same thing that Del Bellard left on this very lane in the first match. Obviously, during the week, the players were not leaving that type of taps when they shot those fantastic scores. So after two frames in our second game, we are even. What advantage does Mike have in being uh, the only left-hander today? The only left-hander on the telecast today is a slight advantage for me because I know what the lanes are going to do when I'm done practicing. They will not change that much by the time I come on TV. I keep an open mind in case they do, but usually they won't because I'm the only left-hander today. And Chris, the left-handers in the field uh, out-average the right-handers this week. Uh, total field 217 average for all the lefties in the field. All the right-handers right -handers combined average 209. So Albies trying to carry that momentum to the title. There's the seven for you. And the pen leaning against it. Once again, the players hit the pocket and come away with just an easy spare to shoot at. Albie doesn't quite get the finish on the ball. It deflects to the left. Four pin lays in the channel. It doesn't take out the seven. The players have been around the pocket so far, but they have not been in the pocket consistently or carrying the strikes consistently. High game this week. Perfect 300. And his opponent had a 300, as we mentioned earlier. Walter Ray Williams, who is about ready to shoot in the third frame with a spare working. Here's a fellow that averaged 250 in his final seven games. Walter also had a 300, that fellow with a Bachelor of Science degree from Cal Poly. Got it in physics. That high hit. He's looking at his fingers on the release. Didn't like it, leaving the 610. Well, not even close, Chris, in the last two shots. You see him pull up at the line. He had been in the pocket his first 12 shots of the, of the first match. He hit the pocket in the first frame. Obviously, off target in the second and third frames. He needs to convert the same sparing left in the second, the 610. And now... Uh the fact that he left the 610 twice that seemingly is getting to him. Let's see if it really bothers him. He's shaking his head. Fingertip grip spreads that index finger for stability on the ball. Let's see if he makes an adjustment. A little extra speed. Yes. My amigo Juan just came out from Mexico. So I'm introducing him to our American friend Larry and our favorite beer, Miller Lite. Yeah, from Porfidor. Juan, me Miller Lite the gusto porque. It tastes muy bueno. Larry. Larry, it's me muscle calories and no gusto filioppo. El comprende? No, not really. <laughs> For mucho great taste, there's only one light beer, Miller Lite. Does your friend speak any English? <laughs> 
a doodah, a doodah. Well, the boy genius. You trying to find out why Kentucky Fried Chicken is America's favorite chicken? Then pay attention, son. Folks just love going to the Colonel's because no one else makes chicken with that special blend of 11 herbs and spices. Any of this getting through to you, son? And of course, no one else's chicken is finger-licking good because nobody else knows the Colonel's secret formula. The secret formula! Kid's too smart for his own good. Kentucky Fried Chicken, Hop on the fast lane at the $140,000 Bowler's Journal Florida BPA Open on ABC's Professional Bowler's Tour next Saturday. That's right. We're at the Miller Light Classic today, but a week from today we cross the state of Florida to lovely Venice for another big event. Mike Albee, uh, not quite set, didn't feel comfortable. He heard some noise off to the side. The other bowler practicing and wisely stepped back off the approach. He leads by one pin. It was his next opponent, David Ozio. If Albee obviously has to win this match before he meets Ozio, he was throwing a few shots. Now he's set, leads by one pin, fourth frame. As you study his footwork, five-step delivery. Boom. Come on, Mike. Come on. And starting over again, Bo, sometimes it pays dividends, doesn't it? <laughs> Watch the footwork of Albie. Just so methodical. He has a nice, nice rhythm. Each step a little long, longer, a little bit more momentum. The four-step four delivery ends up about six inches behind the foul line. Notice how he extends that foul through with that left hand. That's very important to finish the shot, go through towards the target. Albie blows in that thumb hole just to get some of the moisture out. He's been around the pocket the first four frames, leads by one, has a chance to extend to 11, fifth frame. And Tammy Albee, Mike's wife, loved it. So did the capacity crowd here at Kendall Lanes in Miami, Florida. The first good thing that's happened to Albee so far today, hits slightly light in the one, two pocket. He drives the four into the seven, the six. Look at them both laying down into the, that's, Seven and ten, <laughs> what a break. He has Walter Ray down by 11, but this is going to be a tough match. Look at those eyes. He's ready for to get down to one pin difference. And leaves a ten pin to the man we've said from the very start, Bo, that he mentioned earlier had an agent. Now, why that agent doesn't go to work for a little film part in Hollywood, I'll never know. He definitely has the demeanor and the eyes, the look, and he's a tough match game player as he picks up another ball to shoot the spare. Del Ballard says, you know, that ball looks like a spear ball. It's so ugly. <laughs> he makes it up that off-colored red. He says, only that kind of ball could be used for spares. Trails by 11. Don't forget, coming up next, the WBA World Junior Heavyweight Championship. And, uh, Bo, you like to pick fights. You want to pick a winner for me? Well, Chris, uh, I'll... Most of my knowledge came from you. I'll take Holly Field in the third round. It'll be a quick one. He's tough, and uh, I think he's right at the top of his career. But we'll see. It follows the Pro Bowlers Tour. Walter A. Williams, sixth frame. Oh, yes. Walter Ray now. Telling by 11 pins, but Albie is in that uh, position with a double up where he can increase it to 21. And, you know, Albie was the PBA Rookie of the Year in 79, Bowler of the Year in 85. Just watch him. So methodical. Preparation before firing. He excels. It reminds me of Nelson Burton. Of course, Mike Bowles from the other side. Just very precise precision. Well, thank you for the compliment, Chris. And here is Albie. Drops that left shoulder slightly, but notice how steady his head is, how he extends right through to the target. One of the best things a player can do, have that arm come right through the target. Obviously, the ball is in perfect position as he drives all 10 pins in the pit, opens up a 21-pin lead over Walter Ray Williams. He's coming up. Seventh frame has three strikes in a row working. This is a 26-year-old that is making his 40th television appearance. Seven. 
You know, years ago, Mike Albee used to use a 15-pound ball, and he switched to a 16-pound ball about two years ago. As you see him leave what I call the soft seven, the ball doesn't quite drive through the pins. Two years ago, he switched to the 16-pound ball, and he won $200,000. And today, Chris, it looks like his ball is hitting like the 15-pound ball. I don't know if he switched back or not. If we look at Tammy, uh, your tip today is for the ladies, right? That's, that's for sure. A good tip. Okay. We're just beyond the halfway stage of our second match here at the Miller Light Classic. More later. Once upon a time, millions of us roamed the bathrooms of America. We're bull shavers, convinced we had to use shavers with all kinds of expensive extras. But we don't pay an arm and a hoof anymore, because us bull shavers are becoming Bic shavers. Bic gives us an extraordinary shave at an extraordinary price, without bells or whistles. To pay more makes you, well, bullheaded. Try the Bic for normal or sensitive skin, and you, too, will have a beef. With bull shaving. I raced over a thousand miles of frozen wilderness to win the Alaskan Iditarod sled dog race. When I'm on the trail, I've got to really travel light. My dogs and everything else I took along with me had to really work, like Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine. It helped clear up my head, my runny nose, and ease my aches and pains. I can't afford to let a winter cold slow me down, so I use Alka-Seltzer Plus. All right, gang, let's go. Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine, fast, effective relief for tough winter cold. I'd like to wish a happy Valentine's Day to all my family and friends out there. Happy Valentine's Day. And in our nationwide tour of the country, the Professional Bowlers Tour telecast in its 26th year. It's Venice, Florida next week. $140,000 event. Then to Peoria and Ray Becker. Landmark Lanes, the True Value Open. Then back to Milwaukee for the second part of Miller's Slam event. If a bowler can win all three, it's a million bucks. Then to Overland Park, one of our main stops where we always enjoy going back for the King Louis Open. Walter Ray Williams on the approach, seventh frame strike working. Trails Albie by 20, can cut the lead to 10 right here with a strike. And let's see now that he has somewhat of an opening here against Albie. When he got it against Ballard in the first match, he took advantage of it. He uh, shot a 228 to Ballard's 161. Big hit right there, and he can even the match. We haven't had a tie match so far this year, Chris. We would be right in position for that if Walter Ray could strike here. It would be all even with just two frames to go. And isn't it fitting, with the past two years, bowlers of the year, head-to-head -head in our live telecast. They talk about the versatility, the match game ability of Walter Ray Williams, and he really sh showcased it on that shot. He threw hard. He didn't let anything back. Boom, solid in the pocket. The match is all even. What a great match game player. Versatile. Walter Ray against the great stroke of Albie. Eighth frame. <laughs> nice break there at the very end for Mike Albie getting that strike. This is the kind of action we expected to see. I'll tell you, the four players in the top right now, as you see, Albee just ripped that five out. Tomahawk to 10. The match is even through eight frames. Chris Albee's at the top of his game. Walter Ray, obviously, the bowler of the year. Once again, you see the action, the ball driving out the five pin. That's the key pin. It drives over into the 6-10 zone. Boom. As the 10 pin slowly falls into the pit, the match is even. Backing it up, I say Albies bowling as well as he can. Ozio in the next match is in the top of his game. And Holman, he is anxious to win. So there are going to be no losers today. Somebody has to be beaten. For the lead. Tammy doesn't take it as much in stride as her husband. Here we go, Albie to take the lead. The match is all even. He thinks that this is a good shot. The wall hangs wide, hangs wide. No action from the four pin over in the seven pin zone. Albie needs to convert to spare to be even through nine frames. Spare for Albie in the ninth frame. 
Here in the foundation now, Walter Ray Williams, who has strung three. The winner will meet David Ozio, three-time champion from Vider, Texas. Here's the biggest shot of the match for Walter Ray. If he strikes here, he has a 10-pin lead. If he doesn't, he's in arrears by whatever amount of pins he leaves up. Whirl away, comes from behind, he's tough. Walter Ray takes advantage of that strike up in the eighth and takes the lead by 10 pins as he comes up in 10th. But watch this, this shot right here. Walter is struggling on this left-hand lane. He must give it all the speed and all the zip he possibly can to keep the ball in the pocket. He could take a commanding 20-pin lead with a strike. Maximum speed. His reaction tells the story on the 10 pin. You can hear him scream as he sees the solid 10 pin, but that's what happens sometimes when you throw it just too hard. He did the right thing. He says it's going to be in the pocket. It's going to be in the pocket. Not now. This sets up the possibility of a tie match. Walter with a spare and a strike would be a 227. Albie would need two strikes and nine. He would have 227. It's up for grabs, 10th frame. Made sure on that shot. Walter Ray winning the first game, 228 to Dell Ballard Jr.'s 161 on Albie. Never looks at his opponent's performance. Walter Ray has to collect his thoughts, not let down. He could have really put in the pressure, put the pressure on Albie with that strike in the tenth. Didn't happen, but he can't afford to get a short count. If he strikes here, he would force Albie to get all three to win. Slid by leaving the two, and it's a 226 for Walter Ray Williams. And the winner of this game will meet the defending champion here, David Ozio. The possibilities for Mike Albee. He must have two strikes, nine to win or better, eight for a tie. Anything less would be a loser. First shot. A six, the undoing. It looked good, he just hooked a little high. Walter A. Williams wins the match. Well, Williams, averaging about 227 in two games, goes against Ozio, and here's our tip for the week. Watch. The Professional Bowlers Tour Tip of the Week is brought to you by Old Spice. Its subtle masculine fragrance is a classic scent of the American male. This week, we start a three-week mini-series designed especially for the women. The first tip involves a mistake I see the women make most often, and that is bending too far forward at the waist, allowing their shoulders to go too far forward on their way to the foul line. What this causes is a weak, ineffective strike ball, dumping at the line, and often very sore hands. To remedy this problem that women have, keep your shoulders back, especially at the setup area. Keep your hand underneath the ball, supporting the weight of the ball in the palm of your hand, and go ahead and make a good, clean shot. Remember and practice part one of our three-week mini-series. Keep those shoulders back and that hand underneath the ball. What kind of man whistled the Old Spice tune? He's my daddy. My practically perfect husband. You can count on him. He's the captain of my ship. He's a friend. The Old Spice man, a man's man. Clean, refreshing Old Spice. It's the favorite scent of the American man, and he'll never change his tune. And I love him for it. Old Spice. Tomorrow, Michigan battles Michigan State in college basketball. And on ABC's Wide World of Sports, the nation's top pairs compete at the U.S. Figure Skating Championships, plus more. 
Also a daring Mount Everest first on Mutual of Omaha's Spirit of Adventure, all tomorrow. Ah, yes, tomorrow's wide world. All the beauty and grace of the United States pairs figure skating. And here now, Walter Ray Williams, 226 to 217 with six strikes. Albie on his last ball did strike to uh, total 217. So now it's Williams against Ozio, the defending champion in bow. Sizable field of 160. And the average needed to make the top 24, 218. One of the highest of the year. The average game, that's for the 160-man field, 210. We had 1,400 people in the Pro-Am on Tuesday, so it was an excellent Pro-Am we had here. As you see, some of the other top 24 finishes. College player Mike Jazz now. John Mazda says hi to his mom. Scott Deavers, a lefty in there. Palmer Falgren, former champion here. Don Janelle, Purvis Granger. Gary Dickinson and Ferraro tied for 12th and 13th. Hugh Miller stroking along. Veteran Dave Davis had a 299. Bowling great. Tom Milton cranking the ball down there. Houston, Canales, fireballer down there. Powerful Jim Pensek, Sam Mac Macaron, Brian Alpert. Watch that name. Big Chris Goddard up there. Harriet Sullins, uh, new champion. And Jim Miller round out the top 24. All right, there's your tournament leader, Marshall Holman, one of the all-time greats. And this is one of the most beautiful bowling establishments anywhere, believe me. Kendall Lanes, it's a great name, Don Carter, topping it all. And here you see how the qualifying rounds and match play went. 18-game qualifying round, Rosio had the lead. Then Marshall Holman turned red hot in the finals, the 24-game match finals, and was never headed as he led by an almost insurmountable margin of 200 pins or better so obviously Holman is red hot and next week we go over and see Rafi carry on at the Florida tournament over there in Venice Florida just south of Sarasota co-sponsored by the Bowlers Journal magazine and Chris a lot of bowlers from this area are going over there for the Pro-Am also on Tuesday why not <laughs> and stay in the south and get the sun Pete Weber we told you where he finished earlier. 220 is his average, and he is in the lead over Del Ballard, Dave Ferraro. Uh, average on this championship pair, that's as high as it comes, Bo. 240, and then the average on the championship pair by the field, 228. But unfortunately today, the players have only averaged 208 through the first four games. Walter Ray Williams defeating two opponents, Del Ballard and Mike Albee. But here's where the action is going to pick up right now. Williams has the hot hand, he's loose, but he's going against a determined man, David Ozio, who is the defending champion of this tournament. Walter Ray Williams up first. Obviously, Ozio, the higher of the two finishers, has the, op uh, the option of either starting or finishing. He wants Walter Ray to start. I would like to take that decision back because you get this man on a roll and he is tough to eliminate. But David Ozio, who in 10 years on the tour has won three titles. And of course, one of the three right here a year ago. Great concentration, 32, 5'11", 170 pounds. Just didn't come up and he left the two pin. David Ozio, who won his first PBA title by defeating Steve Gilgem in the St. Louis tournament two years back, has just a beautiful style, has that cupped wrist, a good long slide, good high follow through, one of the great players in the PBA Tour today, as he ends up with an easy spare of the two pin, first frame. This is David's 12th match ever on television, and he has had quite a record, eight victories and only three losses. Quickly up. Bider, Texas, near Beaumont. And only 20 miles from the Louisiana border near the Gulf of Mexico. He's up with his strike ball on the left lane. And it worked. Ozio up just has a beautiful style as you watch that ball swing very close to his left leg. Good long follow through. The big snap at the back end. Just sets those pins dancing on the pin deck area. Now Walter Ray Williams to take the lead with a strike. Really groove. Walter Ray, who won the first match of Riddell Ballard, 228 to 161, and then stopped Mike Albee, 226 to 
217. Ballard winning 6,000 a day. All be seven. Loser this match, 8,500. And then the final game, the next game, for 30, $41,000. 27 to the winner, 14 to the loser. Three in a row, Walter Ray Williams. Personal Walter Ray Williams has the pair figured out. He's playing the same line on both lanes, using more speed on the left-hand lane. He looks to be in the driver's seat as you look at David Ozio. A stretch fingertip grip has that glove on there to help support the ball and hold on to it. Needs this strike to stay close in the match. Beautifully done. David Ozio, whom we asked what this tournament, especially since he's a defending champion, has meant to him. Well, this tournament here is, is coming to the conclusion of an aspiring dream I've had all my life. Uh, it seems like before I started bowling, I've always wanted to bowl Marshall Holman in a title match. Uh, it seems like it's something that's always been, like it's going to happen, and today it seems like it could be possible, and uh, I've always had the dream of wanting to bowl him on the, on, in the final match, on TV, in front of everybody, and, and doing him in. And that's, that's my dream. That's what I want to do. And David, uh, who wins that final match in your dream? Of course I do. Uh, that would probably be the conclusion of a, a fantasy, and um, hopefully God will make it come true. All right. He has evened things up with also three in a row. More of our semifinal match after this. This can happen to good bowlers on lanes with limited distance dressing or short oil. Short oil means oil out to here. 26 feet or less from the foul line. Short oil can make your ball react unpredictably, a big problem. Now, the solution from Ebonite, the new Firebolt SO, a urethane ball with a unique additive. To make it roll long, hit hard, and not overreact on today's short oil conditions, Ebonite's new Firebolt SO is the solution to the problems of short oil. temperature drops below 30. Remember the spark plug that's tested to start below zero. Champion, we go to ridiculous extremes to test the reliability of our spark plugs. Up on the pass lane at the $140,000 Bowler's Journal Florida BPA Open on ABC's Professional Bowler's Tour next Saturday. Happy Valentine's to my two sweethearts, Lisa, my daughter Heather. I love you. That was Ozio, and this is the man in his dream. Mr. Intensity Marshall Holman, the tournament leader. And the winner of our semifinal game, Ozio and Williams, will meet Mr. Holman for the title. Three in a row for Walter Ray Williams in his third game of the day. One of seven children, Walter Ray Williams, world's horseshoe champion. All the children play horseshoe. His mom's a bowler too. 117 average as he goes for four in a row. Tough break. You know I what? <laughs> Chris, you know the difference. I think today, as you as you see the uh, the ball in her light in the pocket between the good scoring we saw like yesterday and today, is the players aren't carrying that off hit. He was slightly light on that hit yesterday. They were popping out the ten, popping out the seven. Not to be today, and I think it's just that little extra pressure of the Miller title and possibly the one million dollar bonus if they can win all three. The tension exists here in our live telecast, and Bo, uh, you didn't realize an establishment with so many people could get so quiet. Uh, it's unbearable, I would think, at times for the players. A player uh, really doesn't notice the sound. I think you're right, Chris. When it gets very quiet, it becomes unnatural in a bowling center. Just another one of those natural swings. Walter Ray Williams. So now in five frames, he has four strikes. All right, David Ozio in four has three. Three in a row, and now the fifth frame. Walter Ray Williams, who doesn't watch his opponent, uh, obviously he doesn't want to know what David Ozio is doing, and he doesn't even have the same style, so it's a good idea. The great Don Carter used to do that. That high hit, leaving the 4-7. 
David Ozio avoids the split. Watch the 10 pin. It's going to be standing, and boom, gets knocked out. Leaves the 4-7 Ozio quickly on the approach with a harder ball so he can cut down the amount of hook he's throwing, hopefully to convert the spare. Something uh, obviously bothering him, something laying in the channel. By rules, you cannot throw a shot until everything's cleared out of the channel. That, ten, that pin laying in the right-hand channel should have no effect, so why slow down the action? Well done. Now, if that pin had been in the left-hand channel where possibly the ball could have come in contact with it and affected the shot, then Ozio would have had to remove that pin. Otherwise, he would have been credited for zero on that shot. Walter Ray Williams, all he's doing is concentrating on his game, not paying any attention to Ozio. Six frame. Come on, baby. Here's a man who's a dedicated practicer, bowls every day. He and Steve Wonderlich, you can always find them at a bowling center somewhere. And no doubt he gets the perfect shot. Practice makes perfect. Excellent shot. Ozio trails by one. Walter Ray can extend his lead to 11 pins with another strike here in the sixth. The man that uses that body English after each shot at the line. It's fun to watch him give the extra lift. What putting makes, a hip into it. <laughs> what makes Walter so versatile, he can throw a spinner or a ball that spins down the lane on its side almost when the lanes are very dry. And that's the type of shot you should use when the lanes are dry. Today the lanes are pretty oily and he rolls it end over end. A great lesson to learn. You need both shots. Obviously he's conquered the game. Again, three in the row and a 21 pin lead now here in our semifinal game. More after this. Why do 32 million Americans protect their engines with Quaker State motor oil? Because they're car caring people who want only the best for their engines. Here, Quaker State quality stands up to the constant pounding heat and friction that breaks down motor oil. You can see Quaker State quality, the pure protection that comes from our state-of-the-art formula that can't be beat. Cornflakes is what cereal is supposed to be. It's natural, it's crunchy, it's what I eat. My grandmother actually turned me on to it. She calls it health food. I usually like to put fruit on it, cream, and eat it right straight down. And that is delicious. I eat it by the megabyte. Kellogg's Cornflakes, that's my cereal, and that's also my girlfriend's cereal. And that's great, because we agree on something. Cornflakes from Kellogg's. It's what cereal is all about. Okay, it's time to ask Bo. Here's the question sent in. What type of bowling ball should I buy, Bo? And really two things to consider, Chris. The most weight you can comfortably control. Don't give up speed, though. Use a ball you can keep the speed on. And obviously the type. There's three types. The rubber, the polyester, and I recommend the new urethane. And anybody who has a question, ask Bo. Write to Post Office Box 951, Radio City Station, New York, 10019. David Ozio on the approach. Trails by 21 pins. Can cut the lead of... Walter Ray Williams down to 11 with a strike. All right, does just that. David Ozio, Viter, Texas. You see those bandages on uh, Ozio's arm? Those are really uh, little things he picked up in Japan that Pete Weber told him are kind of like acupuncture. They sent electrical impulses down to help his wrist. and. Uh, if he believes in it, more power to him. I tell you, I don't know if they help his bowling, but he's sure getting the results. Right now, Ozio, who has just been so sharp, can cut the lead of Walter Ray's down to just one pin with a strike. Well, bionic or not, <laughs> you'd have to be a Lee Majors bionic man to cover this one. Take a look at this shot and then the result. Ozio, who seemed to be just a little quick in his preparation for this shot, gets up, never gives it a chance. He was playing around the first arrow, threw it down close to the second arrow, cuts right through the middle, leaves five pins standing. He must go for a lot of speed, try to bounce something around. Yeah. It's the kind of shot you root for, Bo. I don't think when I've ever seen one of those that I haven't put my own body English into it because it's spectacular to see uh, converted. 
Well, you're right, Chris. As David Ozio looks at the scoreboard, he doesn't believe he can lose, and that's the mark of a champion, but he's going against a tough match game competitor. Walter Ray Williams has stayed close in every match, and when his opponent gave him an opening, Z zapped him, and that this is the time to do it right here. Watch Walter. Let's see what happens. It's an inebriated four. <laughs> Here we go. The ball enters the 1-3 pocket. The 2-pin goes to the left-hand part of the screen. Almost takes out the 4. Not to be, but a good, safe shot for Walter Ray Williams. A conversion here in the 8th frame. He'd have a 31-pin lead. When he uh, won the True Value Open in Peoria last year, he won four matches to get that title. So this position is not uh, unfamiliar to him. And of course, being bowler of the year is just giving him, giving him that added confidence. Well, in the championship here, obviously the left-hand lane has been hooking more, and Walter Ray's been the man to conquer it. He's done it with a lot of speed and a lot of determination, just like that shot. Okay. The four falling forward. Now, we talked about the, the action of the two-pin. It goes to the sideboard, drives in behind the, the seven. The seven comes forward, gets the four, and that's the kind of shot that a player likes. Walter Ray has put himself in ideal position. Ozio must strike now, or he cannot win the match. He needs to strike here, the 10th and the 11th frames to have a chance. Maybe. Faint hope for the Vider Texas bowler, defending champion here a year ago. I think asking now for a re rack on the left lane. Gets it. No doubt about this shot in the ninth frame from Ozio. Just lifts all 10 pins right in the pit. Now, Ozio has a potential 227 game. Walter Ray Williams would have to mark to win the match if Ozio can strike out. Absolutely must have this shot. Without it, he cannot win. Not to be. The 10 pin stands the best Ozio can do is 207. Williams already has 208 in the bag. He thinks it's a good shot. Look at the reaction. Begging. Disappointment. So the defending champion threw the tournament into the finals uh, finished second, but then he met last year's bowler of the year, Walter Ray Williams. So it'll be $8,500 for this man, David Ozio. Two eight and a 205 for Ozio. So his dream match, not a reality here in Miami, Florida today. But down the, down the road, I'm sure. A great player. He'll be back. Nice guy, too. Walter Ray Williams just finishing up the match. A potential 258 if he can strike out. He'll be in the 230s with that spare. And bettering his two previous totals of 228 and 226 in his first uh, two-game victories. And Marshall Holman can't wait to get over. In fact, uh, Frank Esposito, our coordinator, had to stop Marshall from moving in to the pair area. He's anxious. Well, he's anxious to break his tournament record here. He's been in the championship round four times here, four times at Don Carter, Kendall Lanes over the years. He has never won a match. He's there been he a tournament leader. Three times he's bowled for the title. He has not won, and he tells me that's all in the past. He's won his last three championship round appearances in other bowling yeah. centers, and he's hungry for that $1 million. So leaving the 2-5, it's a 2-36 for Williams, the winner. The professional bowlers to continue after this message and a word from our local station. When I played football, they called me a troublemaker. But really, I'm just a nice guy who likes to watch a game with a Miller Light. I see you're drinking light, too. Yeah, it tastes great. I agree. But he drinks it because it's less filling. It tastes great. Did you hear that? It's less filling. Pretty strong words. It tastes great. Less filling. Tastes great! Less filling! Tastes great! There's no argument. There's only one light beer. Miller Light. Is that a light beer you're drinking? Yeah, it tastes great. I agree, but that's not what he said. 
Polly, didn't you see that sign? I can't even see out this windshield. Would these help? Of course they would. Get a dollar back on Anco Winter Blades. They prevent the buildup of ice and snow. How's that, Polly? Much better. Now I can see the ski slope. Ski slope! Oh! Oh, 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 oh. I didn't know you could slalom. And co winter blades to see your way clear. After 10 years of Soviet occupation, it is a country without freedom, but not without a dream. Starting tomorrow, this is America. Lore's Band 15G is the only rootworm insecticide that gives you corn security. When you T-band apply SeedSafe Lore's Band 15G, you control rootworms and many other insects. From the surface to the root zone, you stop the yield damage they can cause. For excellent rootworm control and superior yield protection, try Lore's Band 15G. That's corn security. We're here at your Lincoln Mercury Mayor Core Dealer for a truly newsworthy event. The President's Week Sell-A-Thon. Well, the dealers are out to you move... You call this newsworthy? <laughs> well, sir, look at the price on this sleek 87 Sable. Yeah. The dealers are out to move thousands of cars, oh. so they're dealing like never before on every car they sell. Yeah. Links to Lincoln. Look at the satisfied customers. Look at the prices. You wouldn't call this newsworthy? My card. Science Fiction Monthly? Yes, I haven't seen a single Martian drive a Sable out of here yet. Newsworthy. <laughs> Ooh, there he is. Be your Lincoln Mercury Mercure dealer. Oh, Watch Janelle Stelson with weather on 27 News at 6. In our live telecast, Walter Ray Williams, last year's Bowler of the Year, has won three in a row, registering a 236 to David Ozio's 205. He will now meet the tournament leader, Glenn Boy and Marshall Holman. Big day of sports on ABC tomorrow. College basketball, Michigan State. At, and going against Michigan at the Spartans' home arena. To be followed by United States Pairs Figure Skating Championship, World 90 Meter Ski Jumping Championship, and then a 5 Eastern, 4 Central. The premiere of Mutual of Omaha's Spirit of Adventure, accepting the challenge of Mount Everest, and our colleague Donna DeVarona was there to cover it. Okay, let's go to Bo and Don Carter. Thank you, Chris, and the man who is voted the greatest bowler of all time, but he's probably best known for his Miller Lite commercials. Don Carter, what do you think of the action so far today? Oh, I think it's great, uh, Bo. I really do, and particularly this last match, you have such a contrast in styles. And I think uh, today the lanes are a little bit tighter, and I think it would favor Walter Ray. They've had a lot of swing area all week. It doesn't seem to be there today. How about the million dollars? Uh, obviously, you won most almost every term, and I remember when I was younger. Do you ever have a chance at a million bucks? In my career, I don't think I had a chance for a million dollars. Well, I think it's outstanding. I think the winner here today, uh, there's really going to be pressure the next Miller tournament. All right, Chris. Don Carter says he favors Walter Ray Williams. I say you have to beat Marshall Holman. It's going to be a great match. Okay. <laughs> Differences of opinion make not only horse racing, but also professional bowling. The fans either love or like or dislike Marshall Holman. He is flamboyant, but let me tell you, he's one super guy, and so is his opponent, Walter Ray Williams. They are fierce competitors. Big break. Well, the world champion in the horseshoe almost had a leaner, but... Got them all. And now, here we're going to look at our tournament leader. Championship pair average, two games, two fifth, or rather, 250.6. Watch him move to that line. Come on. Ooh, and cat-like, bending at the end. Good lesson to be learned right here as you watch the style of one of the premier bowlers and that ever stepped on a bowling lane. Marshall Holman, look at the intensity in his eyes. Look at that perfect profile. Shoulder high swing, rolls that wrist underneath the ball, and just feathers it, feathers it right through. And he's about six inches short of the line. That gives him plenty of room to slide through the shot. As Carter mentioned, and I agree with him, there's a slight advantage in lane condition to Walter Ray Williams. When the lanes are real slick like this, they favor the down and in player, but Holman's one of the greatest. Firestone Tournament of Champions winner. Two United States Opens to his titles, and he has 
20 PBA championships. It'll behoove Walter Ray to get out to an early lead. He's been able to hang close in all the matches and eventually snap an opponent off when they made a mistake. Walt, you cannot wait for Holman to make his mistake, though. And with shots like that, it's perfection. Six rounds of the tournament. Walter started in 22nd, moved up to 6th, 8th, stayed right around the championship round in the match play from 16th to 11th. And in the final game last night, eased into fourth place. Now he has a chance at the title. Both players using urethane bowling balls today. Fingertip grip for Walter Rake. Semi-fingertip for Holman. 27,000 at stake. More importantly, a chance at a million. Count them. Three in a row for Walter Ray Williams. Now Marshall Holman is up, adjusting his socks. Here is the man in his 85th television appearance winning the Firestone in 1976 and 10 years later last year US Open in 81 and 84 fourth straight year of over a hundred thousand dollars earned came the third millionaire this is a dream match Williams against Holman we asked Marshall what his feelings were about today's championship game. Well, I am on three championship round appearances here at Kendall Lanes, but I've won my last three starts from the number one position, and not only is there 27,000 on the line today, but a chance at a million dollars. I'm going to be pumped and ready to go. In those last three starts, obviously, they weren't here, and there's only one time as the tournament leader won so far in 1987. That was Kent Wagner at the showboat the third week out. Holman for four strikes in a row. A 10 on the left lane. A disappointed Holman. The ball's coming at just such an acute angle into the 1-3 pocket. It seems impossible for anything to stand up with all that power and spin. Not to be Holman snaps the 6-pin right around the 10. Something that didn't happen very often this week. Across lane, he'll reduce the hook to convert to spare. Fourth frame spare for Marshall Holman, the tournament leader. Trailing by one. We'll be back. Enter the $50,000 Firestone Tournament of Champions sweepstakes, and you could win a trip to the Tournament of Champions, where you'll be paired with one of the five finalists. And if he wins, you win up to $25,000. Come to Firestone for your sweepstakes entry form, which is also an instant winner card, and everybody's a winner. You could win a free MasterCare tune-up, alignment, shocks, brakes, discount coupons, and more. Enter the Tournament of Champions sweepstakes at Firestone today. You could win a trip to the tournament and up to $25,000 cash. presents hot and juicy hamburgers. If you've ever had a dry, chewy hamburger, you're gonna love Wendy's hot and juicy hamburgers. Wendy's new big classic, soft Kaiser roll, juicy meat, juicy toppings, and lots of napkins. Tomorrow, Michigan battles Michigan State in college basketball. And on ABC's Pride World of Sports, the nation's top pairs compete at the U.S. Figure Skating Championships, plus more. Also, a daring Mount Everest first on Neutral of Omaha Spirit of Adventure, all tomorrow. I'd like to wish my folks and my girlfriend, Terry, a happy Valentine's Day. And there are plenty of people who would like to send a valentine to Patty Brash. Sports Marketing, the Miller Brewing Company, alongside... There is John Maline, the manager of Special Markets. He will be presenting the check to the winner of this very game you're watching now. Walter Ray Williams, who has won three games, is in the championship final match with three in a row, shooting in the fourth frame. saying in southern Florida, Chris, is, is, is he's taking his chill pills, and that means he's just plain old cool, and he took through that one as, with as coolness as you possibly can. 
to take an 11 pin lead. Now here's a key shot. Now you watched Walter Ray be very smooth with that last shot as you saw Holman. Now watch this shot. He'll lean on it. He'll jump right out of his shoes. He wants this one very badly. Extra speed. Come on, Bob. After winning three tough games, here is the fifth strike. Bang! He drives all ten pins in the pit. Walter Ray says, here I am. He's a tough competitor. Wasn't that pretty? Foot control. Lovely. Chris Holman bowling as well as I've ever seen him bowl in his whole life. Bowling with confidence, bowling under control. And if he throws five more shots in this game like that, I don't see how Walter Ray can beat him. Holman wiping the oil or conditioner off the track or rolling area of the ball to get a smooth surface for each shot. But watch Holman's grip. He uses what we call a drop fingertip, semi-fingertip grip. as a good balance between power and control. Right now he needs a strike to cut Walter's read to 11. off the deck and running it out. Marshall Holman still trailing by only 11. Big shot right here from Marshall as he runs it out. He sends it out wide. Tremendous wrist action. The ball's out there. Now turn left. Watch the head pin make him dance. That's why you have angle, speed, and lift. And watch Holman's as he walked back, he gave Walter Ray Williams the look that here I come. <laughs> now it becomes a sight game too. breaks the string at five. A little extra effort occurred in that shot. Three, six, ten. Walter's had everything go his way so far. He's hit high three or four times a day and has come away with a makeable split, a spare. The six, ten in two of the other matches, but now he has the three, six, ten, a little tougher task in front of him. Championship match for the Miller Light Classic Trophy. Only eight pins are separating these two professionals. Eight pins. Double up shooting in the seventh. Marshall Holman with one more strike extending his string to three strikes in a row could take the lead. Extra time. Holman has just thrown the ball so well the first six frames. We nearly had a channel ball. Hung there. The one, two, four, six, ten, the ball slips out of Marshall's hand. Watch this release. Now watch Marshall's release. Everything looks good. Now you, if you, as he comes through, the ball will slip out of his hand. He doesn't get that ball over the foul. See it just barely flip out over the foul line. Doesn't get the lift. It hangs way out by the channel. Marshall has to go for this boldly. The one, two, four, six, ten. It is an open frame. And he is hot. Hot is the word for it, Chris. He had bowled so well for six frames. As Holman, remember, has never won a championship match here. He's zero and three, has dug himself a major hole here with one error in the seventh frame. And like the great champion that he is, this comes right back. Bitterly disappointed. Now Williams, winner of three games up to this point. Strike in the seventh, shooting in the eighth. Not over by any means. Walter Ray Williams, with those five strikes to start the match, is going at a 237 pace. And by that, I mean if he spare strikes the rest of the way, 237. Holman has a potential 238. But every time 
every time that Walter has had a chance to drill somebody, he's done it. He has that opportunity right now in the early match. The Riverboat Gambler. Looks like one, doesn't he? Chris, you picked him years ago. He was a great match game player, a little bit on off the dock style, but he knows how to win. And with this shot right now, he would slam the door on Marshall's dreams of this championship and a potential $1 million. Only Walter Ray will be the one that will have that chance in the next month or so. Big shot. An incredible afternoon for Walter Ray Williams. Never a doubt. And Marshall doubling. You have to look at this game of Marshall Holmans and say, why me? Obviously one of the greatest bowlers that ever stepped on the lane. He looks at the scoreboard. Something, he still has to try. Something could happen, such as a, a foul or something like that, where Holman could win. So he has to keep trying. But he's bowled such a great game not to be even close. That ends all hope. Obviously, it didn't make any difference. The best Marshall could have gotten is 217. Walter Ray Williams, a potential 277. Holman bowled just a phenomenal game. Started with three strikes, solid 10 double. The one error shot in the seventh frame, two more strikes, a 10 pin to 10th. It doesn't seem possible that he could not have even been close in the match, but this guy has really wiped out the four opponents. The man that if he can win in Milwaukee and in Cleveland, would pick up a check from the Miller Brewing Company for one million dollars. And just coming off the Bowler of the Year honors, if you were going to pick a man to accomplish that feat, it'd have to be this 27-year-old from Stockton, California. Now he's loose. Man on this championship pair in two games averaged 255. He'd be in the 270s for this title game. He's going to pick up a trophy, check for 27 grand. A big 277, and Williams wins his fourth title. We'll be back. Ah, draft beer. It's always been the smoothest, freshest beer around, poured straight from the tap. And now, there's a true draft beer in a bottle. Miller Genuine Draft. It's not heat pasteurized like most bottled beers. It's cold filtered for real draft smoothness. Ask for Miller Genuine Draft. The Miller with the black label. It's beer at its best. The 87 Yugos are here, and people love them. I think it's fun to drive. I like the rack and pinion steering. We wanted a dependable second car. It's easy to love America's most affordable new car, the 3990 Yugo GV. And now there's even more value during Yugo's Pack for Action sale. You can get sport wheel covers, a right side mirror, roof rack. Great. And a three-year, 50,000-mile extended service plan. Wow. All at terrific savings. I'll take it. Hurry, this offer won't last long. See your participating Yugo dealer today. When the temperature drops below 30, remember the spark plug that's tested to start below zero. Champion, we go to ridiculous extremes to test the reliability of our spark plugs. Two Olympic medalists square off. Undefeated Evander Holyfield defends his junior heavyweight crown against the last man to beat Mike Tyson, Henry Tillman, on ABC's Wide World of Sports, next. The Professional Bowlers Tour is brought to you by Miller Genuine Draft. 
cold filtered for real draft smoothness. By Champion Spark Plug Company. And by Ebonite International, where advanced technology has striking results. Okay, check this winner's smile. 11 strikes, 277, the Marshall Holman's 205. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's right, wow. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was surprised yesterday morning I was in 17th place and I bowled really good yesterday and got a lot of breaks, won a lot of matches and was able to sneak in the top five last night and uh, fortunately my opponents uh, were nice to me. Well, let's meet that great champion that you uh, just defeated, Marshall Holman. Here's Bo. Thank you, Chris. Well, Marshall Holman, my dad told me when he saw him 15 years ago, Marsh, that you were going to be one of the greatest bowlers of all time and I've never doubted his ability to pick championship players. Unfortunately, today, this is kind of your jinx uh, bowling center. Let's look at the game. You led the tournament by two, three hundred pins, started with three strikes in a row, a solid ten, a double. Then what happened there in the, what, sixth, seventh frame? I had the bowl of uh, the perfect game, and uh, I bowled well up until I left the, the one, two, four, six, ten. It was just a, it was a crappy shot. It was, <laughs> you know, it was. I mean, I threw it terrible, and, uh, you know, I got my just reward. Uh, then I tried to make the conversion, and uh, I took the chance of sliding by and only getting seven. So, uh, you know, Walter bowled a great game. I figured he would, and I, I knew I needed to bowl uh, my best effort. I just, I didn't give my best, I gave my best effort. I just didn't come through with that one shot that I really needed at that time. Marshall, you're a true champion. I'm sure you'll be back again. Don Carter was very prophetic. The advantage was to Walter Ray Williams. Chris, you have two great champions here, Walter Ray and Marshall Holman. Walter Ray, congratulations. That's right. Let's bring in John Maline, manager of sports marketing at Miller Brewing Company. And John, a uh, couple of nice items. A couple of nice items. Walter Ray, on behalf of Miller Lite, I'm delighted to present you with this trophy and this check for $27,000 for winning the Miller Lite Classic. Congratulations. And best of luck in going after the million dollars in our Miller Lite Slam. We'll see you in Milwaukee. Okay. Walter, uh, now you don't have to worry about paying for that new house. <laughs> well, uh, I can uh, rest a little easier now. <laughs> My girlfriend helped me out there in that situation. <laughs> oh, on Valentine's Day, a present for her too then? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think she'll like it. <laughs> okay, Bowler of the Year, congratulations again. All right, thanks, Chris. Walter Ray Williams, winning here as a professional bowler's tour, was produced by Carol Letty, directed by Larry Tan, technical director Les Wise, associate director David Kevia. Now this is Chris Shankle, along with Nelson Burton Jr., saying so long from Miami, Florida. Coming up next on ABC's Wide World of Sports, 1984 Olympic teammates meet for a world title. Undefeated champion Evander Holyfield defends his junior heavyweight crown against Henry Tillman who is the last man to defeat Mike Tyson. The action comes your way next on ABC's Wide World of Sports. This is Chris Shankle speaking for everyone here, again wishing you a happy Valentine's Day, as this, from Miami, Florida, has been a presentation of ABC Sports. Once again, the winner is Bowler of the Year, Walter Ray Williams, 277, to Marshall Holman.